Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at Joplin, how to get it installed in Docker, and talk about why this will be my new note-taking application moving forward. Before we get further into this video, I wanted to let you know that I have teamed up with IP Royal to bring you a special coupon code for a 50% discount of their residential proxy service. Now there are countless reasons you might want to perform data scraping, whether you're trying to archive a large amount of data or gather unstructured data from different sources, IP Royals proxies may be exactly what you're looking for. Picking the right proxy solution for your needs will allow you to gather data even from hard to reach sources and help you avoid bans from using a single IP to do all of your scraping or data gathering. For this reason, I recommend using their rotating residential proxies and doing this provides a constant stream of fresh IPs for all sorts of web crawling projects. IP Royal offers IPs from all over the world so you can focus on the geolocations you need for your data scraping needs. You can quickly integrate IP Royal proxies with most management software or use them in your own solutions. If you run into any problems, IP Royal support is available 24 seven to help you start scraping as soon as possible. Be sure to check out the link in the description and use the code DBTech at checkout to get a 50% discount on their Royal residential proxies. So I just got Joplin installed for the first time the other day. And once I kind of wrapped my head around it, I almost instantly fell in love with how easy it is to use and, and some of the things that you can do with it. So I thought that we would take a look at that in this video. Um, and so let's just jump over to my desktop and take a look. So here is Joplin. This is the desktop application. Uh, and over here we can see that we've got notebooks and I can add a notebook right here. We can look at all of the notes that we have here. Uh, individual notebooks are listed below that. Uh, of course, I've got one that I was doing some testing with. And then down below that, we can see that there are two desktop notebooks and a mobile notebook. And I believe the idea is so that every time you sign in with a new device, it creates a notebook for that specific device so that, you know, maybe you've got, maybe you've got a, a work computer that you're logging into. So it's gonna keep all of your work stuff there by default. I think that that's important to note. But then in, in the other part of the house, I've got a laptop set up with this as well. And that is another notebook. So you could, I guess, kind of containerize your notes in different uh, in different notebooks, depending on which computer you're working on. Of course, you can go back and just add notes to any of these if you wanted to. But I think the idea is to kind of separate devices so you can have device specific notebooks for individual notes there. I think that's the rationale here. Um, and then of course, below that, we've got tags. Uh, we can see uh, updated remote items, fetched items, uh, completed, uh, how long it took to complete. And then of course we can synchronize just by clicking the button there. If we come in uh, over here, we can see like, we'll just take a look at this desktop note here or this notebook here. We can see that there are uh, some different entries here. Um, and we can of course click through all of these and use uh, either Markdown or WYSIWYG for editing. I appreciate that there are both options there, um, but you can kind of think of this as like an Evernote replacement. In fact, I believe we jump over to their website. Joplin is in a, open source note-taking app, capture your thoughts and securely access them from any device. You can download the app, which I've done there, uh, or you can you can use a hosted version that they've already got set up here. And of course, if we scroll down here a little bit, uh, we've got multimedia notes where you can do videos, PDFs, images, audio files are all supported. I dig that. Again, lots of, lots of calls to action to download the app. I appreciate that as well. Uh, you can do collaborations with this, which I dig. Uh, you can save web pages as notes. Uh, so you can get the Clipper. It's a, it's a browser extension for, for a couple of different browsers. I think Firefox, Chrome, maybe Edge. Below that, you can customize it uh, again with the WYSIWYG or the rich or you know, rich text WYSIWYG, kind of interchangeable there. Or Markdown if you wanted to do that. Um, your notes, wherever you are, 100%. I've got this on my phone. I've got this on my laptop. I've got this on my computer. And I can access this from anywhere because again, I've got this uh, set up on a domain name. 100% your data, I absolutely love that because it's on your server, so it's your data. And that's kind of one of the reasons that I like self-hosting is so I don't have to rely on third-party providers who may go out of business or whatever the case is there. So there's definitely a website you can check out of theirs if you wanna get more information about it. Uh, they've also got over here, you know, a hub.docker.com that has been updated recently. I love that, uh, five days ago. Of course, they've also got a GitHub uh, with more information. If you wanna look through the source code and that sort of thing, you can absolutely do that. Uh, over here is my server that I have set up. Of course, we're gonna set up a, a new fresh server for, for the sake of, of uh, kind of showing that process. Of course, that's what we're here for. And then uh, if I come over just as a quick demonstration here, um, if I wanted to go over to my notebook, uh, and of course, this is just a, a blog post that I copied and pasted just to kind of familiarize myself with the Joplin uh, process, uh, the workflow there. Once you've written up your, your, your page, your post, whatever you wanna call it, your note, you can just come over here and click on publish note. Um, and then you can click shareable link 
And then I've actually already copied and, and moved this over, but this is what that would look like on a web page. So it actually looks really good. I appreciate just the simplicity of it. Uh, not a lot of bells and whistles here. There's your note. So that's kind of the gist of Joplin. And uh, one thing I wanna to touch on just real quick is there's not really a web interface to create notes. Um, there is a web interface to administer your Joplin server, but uh, if you want to you know, create notes, edit notes, share notes, that sort of thing, you will either need a desktop app or a mobile app in order to do that. So that's just kind of one of those little caveats that I think most, most people will be fine with, but I think there will be some people who will take issue with that. And for those people, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to tell you. That's just kind of how this application works. So now that we've taken a look at uh, kind of how Joplin works as far as a desktop app is concerned, the mobile app is, is very much more of the same. Um, but now that we've taken a look at the app itself, let's take a look at how easy it is to get a Joplin server set up and ready to go. Now I am going to do this in Portainer, but you could just as easily do this in command line by setting up a docker-compose.yml file, uh, putting in everything you need, which I'll show in a moment, and then deploying that way. But for the sake of simplicity and having a nice graphical user interface to go with, we're gonna use Portainer for this. So what we're gonna do once we're logged in is we're gonna come over to here, uh, just so that we're in our area uh, for our environment. And then we're gonna go to stacks for that environment. We're gonna come up to the top right, click on add a stack. Uh, I'm gonna call this Joplin. Uh, Joplin uh, Tut, and I'm gonna paste this in here. Now, we're gonna kind of walk through this. You're gonna see some passwords and that kind of stuff. I don't care. Uh, I appreciate the concern that I get when people say, hey, I saw your password. This password won't be available by the time you see this video, so it's fine. Uh, so below this, so, so if we scroll down a little bit here in our web editor area and scroll back up, so we've got a version three, we've got some services uh, listed under here. We've got a database of our image that we're gonna use for that as Postgres version 15. We've got a volume for that so that uh, it will have a place to store uh, the data that you put in there for your notes and that sort of thing. Uh, the default uh, Postgres port right here of 5432 is right there. Uh, the restart unless stopped uh, for the restart policy is perfectly fine. You could say always, or or there, there are several different options there, but unless stopped, it's perfectly acceptable for my setup here. Uh, below that, we've got environment variables, a Postgres password, a Postgres user, and a Postgres database. Uh, change these to something better than what I've got here. Again, this is just for demonstrative purposes. And make sure that whatever you change these to, uh, when we get down into the actual app, there will be username, password, uh, database, all of that. Make sure those all line up. Uh, that's gonna be super, super important. If they don't match, then the app can't log into the database and you won't get anywhere. For our app, uh, we've got an image of Joplin slash server with the latest version there. It depends depends on the database of this DB right here. So basically uh, this DB service of the Pro Postgres database needs to be up and running before the app starts to do its thing. Uh, that's what that depends on is for there. Uh, the port of 22,300 is default. I actually appreciate that they went real high up in the port number, uh, relatively speaking, compared to a lot of the other applications that we've looked at over the last few years. Again, we've got an unless stopped uh, restart policy here. Again, perfectly acceptable. Um, our app port, you could change this right here. Uh, whatever you change this to, if you change this, make sure you change uh, up here as well on the right side. That's what it's gonna be looking for. Uh, we've got an app base URL. So wherever you're gonna host this, I've already got my uh, my domain set up. I've also already got a reverse proxy, well, a Cloudflare tunnel set up pointing to this IP address at that port. Um, so you would need to either have a tunnel set up or a tunnel available to set up or, or a re reverse proxy or whatever method of remote access you want. Uh, if you plan on accessing this outside of your, your area, um, it's super easy to set up. Uh, I've made several videos on that. So we're not really gonna cover that here. Just know that if you want remote access, you will have to set up remote access. So there you go. So next we've got a database client, a DB client equals DB. Basically this DB right here uh, was declared above, right here above the, or for, as the name of the service for the database. You can think of this, uh, this DB up here is, uh, we're defining the host name of that container. And that's what we're looking for down here is that container's host name. So DB, as we saw above. Again, we've got our Postgres uh, password database and user. Make sure those match with what you saw above or what you set up above. Uh, again, our Postgres port was 5432. We saw that above as well. Uh, we've got a Postgres host, uh, which again is also the host name. I'm not actually sure why it's in there twice, but that's, that's how they did it. So that's how we're doing it. 
Uh, we've got a mailer enabled. You can disable that if you want to, uh, but basically if you need to recover your password, you need to send credentials to somebody, whatever the case is, you will want a mailer enabled. Um, and so I'm gonna be using the mailer host of smtp.gmail.com on port 465, mail is secure uh, with a one there, my username, password, um, all of that is in here. Uh, for for sending mail from here to to whoever else needs it to access your uh, your Joplin instance, and then below that we've got a volume of Joplin DB, uh, which was what we've got set up for the volume for the database up here at the top. Once we're happy with all of this, all you've got to do is scroll down and click on Deploy the Stack. We'll give this a minute to do its thing, and then we'll come back and take a look. A few moments later. So here we are just a couple of minutes later, and if I come into here and I take a look at the, the logs for the database and scroll down, it says database system is ready to accept connections, so that's good. Uh, that means the database came up with no issues. So we can come back and take a look at the logs over here for our, 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 our Joplin application. Uh, we're gonna scroll down here a little bit, and it looks like all of that went well. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so it's throwing an issue. Uh, oh, with my, that's that's whatever, I'm not, oh, that's because uh, I've still got this Joplin application running in the background. Um, it's it's trying to log into this because I use the same URL. You probably won't see that if this is your first time setting it up. So, so here we are on joplin.dbtech.com. Uh, of course, it sent me over to the login screen. Uh, the default email and password, uh, you can just look that up, but it's admin at localhost. And the password is admin. So we're gonna go back over to here, like so. And now I love that at, at the top, it's like, hey, you haven't changed your password, you should do that. So we're gonna go over here and do that real quick. Change it now, my username is gonna be I highly recommend that you go in and change uh, not just your name and your password, just change all of it to something, uh, something that's not the default just for security purposes. We'll click on update profile here. Give this just a second to update. And there we go. A confirmation email has been sent to your new email address. Please follow the link to, to validate that. So what we'll do is we'll go over and check my email next. And as expected, here is the email that, that it sent me. It says click here to, uh, click. please click on the following link to confirm your email address. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of drag this down. And there we go. Now it has uh, changed my all of my credentials there. So get logged in again. And then, so this has already been done. It says your email has been confirmed, which means we can actually close out both of these. Um, and if we come over to items, there's nothing in there yet. Um, we'll take a look at that in just a moment though. Logs, uh, nothing in there yet because this is all brand new fresh. Come over to admin, we can uh, take a look at users over here. Just the one user, uh, we can add users from here. We can disable users from here, whatever needs to be done. User deletions will also show up over here uh, if, you've, if you've done any of that. Tasks. Uh, these are all of the cron jobs that are available. And if you wanted to, you could uh, just check all of the boxes like so and start selected tasks. And that way all of your, your kind of background tasks will be handled automatically. Absolutely love that it will take care of that just that easily. And then next we can click on emails and we can see the emails that have been sent from the server. Uh, well, to me, cause that's that I'm the only user. Um, but that's that's how easy it is to get set up. Let me come back over to to our Joplin app here real quick, and let's see if I can get it to synchronize all of this. Let's do that. And the synchronization completed. So I didn't actually lose anything by taking down my previous server. If I come over to here and go to items, uh, here is uh, everything that's been synchronized from my old or from my old setup to my new setup, just by having the application open. Absolutely love it. But there is one other thing that I almost forgot to show, and that is how to put in your URL, your username, and your password in the Joplin app so that you can do the synchronization. So what we're going to do is come over here, obviously, to our Joplin app. Uh, we're going to come up to uh, Tools. We're going to go to Options. We're going to go to Synchronization. And uh, right here, by default, this will be set to like none. Uh, what you wanna do is change this down to Joplin server beta, fill in your URL, your username, your password, uh, decide how often you want it to synchronize, uh, make all of your adjustments there. Once you're happy with that, just click apply or okay. Either of those will work. And then you'll be good to go as far as synchronization is concerned, as long as you put in the right URL, email, and password.
because this has a desktop app that I can install on any of my app uh, on any of my desktops, because this has a mobile app that I can install on my phone, this will be my new go-to note-taking app. Um, of course, this setup uh, won't be the the final version of that. Of course, this is just for demonstrative purposes. But I think moving forward, I will absolutely set this up on my Proxmox server that's there behind me, and uh, this will be what I'll be using moving forward. So uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, checking this out. Of course, if you got questions or comments, there's a, a whole comment section down there that you can take a look at. Uh, there's a, a section down below this video called the description section, where you can find all of the links that you'll need for this, as well as checking out the sponsor. Uh, also, if you'd like to, while you're down there, if you head over and become a channel member, join my Patreon, or become a member of dbtech.fans, you'll get uh, not maybe not always early access, but always 100% ad-free access to any of my content that's available. There's a huge library not a huge, there's a decent sized library of a, a few dozen videos that are available on all of those platforms where you can uh, kind of take a look at all of that content with no ads in it, if you're interested in doing that. And you can really just do it for like a dollar a month. If, if that's all you wanna do, that's perfectly acceptable. So, but you don't have to, you absolutely don't have to. That's just for people who want to, it's available. So uh, I'm gonna quit rambling. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.